Welcome to the PokeVet Surgery, where we take care of your Pokemon that look like everyday pets. I'm your host, Jim Leader Mia, and in this series we'll be looking at Pokemon designs based on domestic species in the real world. It's a spin on your usual top 10 or 5 of a specific type, looking at species that should be grouped together rather than types. Number 5. Copping out already and tying Chinchino and Pachirisu. Both of these have incredible designs. This is all cuteness with a little bit of sass and you can definitely see that they have some strength in them. Chinchino I just think is super cute and a very clever design of course based on the chinchilla. Pachirisu, on the other hand, I think had an excellent role in Dawn's development in the Diamond and Pearl series. Number 4. Victini. I must admit to you that I haven't seen the black and white movie Victini and Zekrom and Victini and Reshiram. I really want to now though because after looking at pictures of Victini and little GIF images and video clips on YouTube, I've come to really like this Pokemon and now I want to see more of it. The reason why I put Victine in my number 4 slot is again because of design choice and how it's related to rabbits or a type of a pocket pet which is what this top 5 is all about. But it's not as clear cut as for example Baneary that you can clearly see is a rabbit or Ferret that's obviously a, well, ferret. So I like the little nod to Nike where how its head is tilted, it makes the, you know, little Just Do It logo and how it's related to victory once again. And who doesn't want a bit of luck and victory on their hands? Number 3. Quilava. I like all three starter Pokemons from Johto. I think they're all fantastic design choices and there's nothing wrong with either of them. I haven't actually used Cyndaquil as my starter before, but I really would like to. Unfortunately, I only have one copy of Soul Silver, and there's so much to do in Soul Silver, I'm no way going to start it over again. But I might actually, on a computer simulator, play Pokemon Crystal version and then use Cyndaquil as my starter. The reason why I put Quilava here is because just before I started my YouTube channel, I was running a Facebook page under the Crystal Badge as a type of a fan page for Yu-Gi-Oh, Dragon Ball Z and of course Pokemon content. And I worked really hard to make good articles. That was before I had Pokemino, so that was sort of my blog post for Pokemino but on Facebook. And the most comprehensive one I made was actually on the three Johto starters. I made a collage of each of them, all relating to their different trainers in Johto and different episodes that I enjoyed from the series. And that made me think I can actually talk a lot about these Pokemon and so many other topics and that led me to YouTube, also under the inspiration of many excellent Poketubers. I chose Quilava because it's a ferret-like fire Pokemon, again a fantastic design choice and because I think all the second stage evolutions in Johto are so much better than this third stage evolution. Uh, so I really think they're in need of a Mega Evolve because there's not that much difference between Bayleaf and Meganium, Croconaw and Feraligatr, and even Quilava and Typhlosion. So I'd really like to see Mega Evolutions in the Johto, Johto starters in Sun and Moon, 
but um, especially for Quilava because Quilava you can see the evolution from Cyndaquil to Quilava how the eyes are open it's more attacking rather than Cyndaquil's sleepy demeanor and I feel like they can just go that extra step by giving Typhlosion a mega evolution I enjoyed Cyndaquil as Ash's companion in the Johto series and I thought it was excellent when it evolved but I thought it was a bit late in the series I feel like it could definitely have happened earlier Cyndaquil also gave me some of my favorite gym battles in Johto uh, Jasmine Steelix is one the Skarmory at the top of the mountains Milk Tank there's just so many great battles that Cyndaquil participated in number two Nidoran both Nidoran <laughs> So, I've already spoken a little bit about Nidoqueen in my Moonstone Sunstone video a few months ago. The two Nidorans are iconic designs in the Pokemon series. The little starter, that was a really bad impression, but you know what I mean, where Nidorino is against Gengar. I mean, that Nidorino was a Nidoran first. Then, of course... The episode with the two Nidoran, Wherefore Art Thou Pokemon? Where the two little Nidorine were in love. It's very cute. But I just think these Pokemon show evolution so well. In Nidoran Male's case, it became quite an aggressive looking Pokemon when it evolved into Nidorino. And just looked beastly when it evolved into Nidoking. And then of course, Gary had a Nido King, which with Arcanine felt the wrath of Mewtwo long before the Pokemon movie. In fact, the Battle of the Badge was, I think it was the Battle of the Badge. That episode was chronologically just before Pokemon the first movie. So there Nido King is also a very important part in the Pokemon world. Then Nidoran, I adore Nidorina. I think it's such a great step. You can see how it has evolved. It stands up a little. The reason why I didn't choose Nidorina or Nidorino for the pocket pet slot is because they actually start looking more dinosaur-like, especially with Nidorina as it stands up. It looks more like a dinosaur-inspired Pokemon rather than a little ferret-type rabbit thing. One of my favorite episodes, and this is always the reason why I choose these Pokemon, is the heartbreak of Brock, where a girl that's in love with the idea of love trips over, Brock catches her, and suddenly she is in love with him. The tables have turned, and there's actually someone that likes Brock. This girl is just into the whole thing of knight in shining armor coming to rescue her, because later on in the story, James saves Tamaku and then she falls in love with him and wants to be engaged to him. And at the end of the story, she falls in love with the doctor and they actually get engaged and go on to be married. But even though that seems a little silly, the plot was very well developed. It was funny, it showed Brock off as the main character a little bit and... Again, Nidorina and Nidorino played Spotlight in that one. So these are just iconic Pokemon throughout the series that you have to think about when you think of the Pokemon universe. And number one is Eevee. You all know an Eevee story of someone. You all know Eevee's story about the Pokedex entry, how it evolves into various Pokemon, there's always some evolution battle going on about who's the best and who's who's favorite, which new mega evolutions will come or extra evolutions will come for the Eevee line. But today I actually just want to talk to you about my Eevee story. So the first time I saw Eevee was actually on a card and it was the Pokemon Junior cards, which don't look anything like the trading card game. And I just remember looking at it and not thinking that it's cute. That wasn't my first thought. My first thought was it looks strong. It just had this stature of pride. And I'm actually quite sorry that they haven't 
kept that design choice. It looks the the Pokédex one looks a lot cuter now than it used to. And one of my first episodes that I saw in the Pokémon series was after the Indigo League. I don't remember the Ash in the Indigo League very well. I mean, I remember it now because I've rewatched it a few times, but Eevee faced off against Pikachu, Gary's Eevee. And when it came out of his out of its Pokéball, we all expected to see Gary's starter. Because we didn't know which starter Gary chose. Obviously later we realized that it was Squirtle, but we wanted to see his starter and we didn't get that. We saw we got this little bunny. And we thought, oh great, what's this gonna do now? We have a rabbit and a mouse. And Eevee was strong, just the way it composed itself, it was proud, it was well groomed, everything about it was great and I just fell in love with this Pokemon. And also if you've seen my recent post on Pokemino, Eevee is crucial in the de development of Gary's character. So you guys can check that out afterwards but I'll give you a little brief summary of it. Gary saw his Pokemon as a means to an end. He wanted to be the greatest trainer. He wanted to earn eight badges before Ash did. He wanted to become the champion or whatever his goal was. He wanted to be the best and Pokemon was just a way for him to get it done. After his traumatic loss to Giovanni, it scared him. It scared him of this unknown power and that there are actually things that he doesn't know and he can't research it and sometimes life just throws you this unexpected thing. And how we see this transformation later is when we see Gary facing off against a boy using an Alakazam. Suddenly out of the Pokeball an Umbreon appears and that's the very same well-groomed strong Eevee that evolved using friendship and moonlight as we know but that's not really relevant right now the point is is that gary used to see pokemon as not i wouldn't say his slaves but his battling partners his toys he didn't see them as equals or friends and Eevee evolving into Umbreon just proves that Gary has changed. Gary has become this human being that can be humbled by the presence of losses. And he uses Umbreon and it just dominates. That's why Umbreon is my favorite evolution is because of that battle and how it absolutely shows this great journey that Gary's been on and look forward to a video on Gary's journey. I also do one on Ash's journey but that will be more towards the end of the year. Eevee also plays a great role early in the Johto series with the Kimono Girls where Sakura has an Eevee that hasn't evolved and she wants to go on a journey but her sisters baby her or kind of pick on her a little bit like Misty's sisters and she wants to head out on her own but her sisters don't feel that she's ready. Again this is a fantastic episode, Troubles Brewing and we see Sakura later again in Espeon Not Included. Her Eevee evolves into Espeon in the end. But this is another way of Eevee showing growth in trainers and we also saw that, saw that much later in the series with May and her Eevee and now with Serena and her Eevee but that to me is not as relevant as what I've experienced with Eevee as a character. I also like for what Eevee stands in the Pokemon community where you can be whatever you want to be and you can be strong and you can be relevant and you can be clever and beautiful and relevant no matter what you choose to be. If you want to be a Vaporeon, you will be a powerful Vaporeon. If you want to be a Jolteon, you'll be a fantastic Jolteon. Be an Espeon, be a Sylveon, be any one of them. And that's of course a metaphor for being certain people in life. 
So I think Eevee is definitely still a big part of the Pokemon community and don't let other people make you dislike this Pokemon because fandom sometimes get in the way of the actual message of the original story. So that's why Eevee is my number one pocket pet in this vet surgery. So let the battle for the crystal badge begin.